In order for MIDI routing to be complete, we actually have to have two pieces connected. First is the instrument MIDI input and output. So that's where we select all, which means just any MIDI signals coming into the system at all, because it's not likely even if you had multiple signals connected or multiple devices that you're playing them both at the same time, or we specify the exact one that we're looking for. On the output, we need to be connected to a virtual instrument in order to be able to hear sounds coming out. Now, it is important to double check that your virtual instrument is actually actively patched and that it's on the right channel. Notice over here, we see it say MIDI node vacuum. When it comes to more complex virtual instruments, we also then have to make sure that the channel input is corrected. So you'll notice on here it says vacuum one. We have to make sure that it says vacuum one on the device. Because once we have more than one MIDI track, you'll start to see that, especially if there's more than one vacuum, you'll see multiple vacuums listed and you'll have to keep track of making sure every one of them are routed to their specified vacuum. So if I zoom down here, I see I just duplicated all these tracks. Now I see vacuum two, vacuum three, vacuum four, and I need to make sure that in my plugin window, that is vacuum four. One other way to test if at least at the plugin level we're routed correctly is to just push the key on screen. This tells us that the routing, at least internally, is correct. Even if the MIDI routing coming from the external devices is not. We have to be record enabled. And our last step that really helps here is we also need to make sure that our audio IO input output is set to go out to our main stereo output. We don't need an audio input for these paths because the audio input is directly routed from the virtual instrument. 